Now, the first thing that you want to do whenever you're writing a song is listen to the instrumental or the beat. The reason why is because that's going to get you inspired. A lot of times the music will speak to you and tell you what the direction of the song is going to be. OK, so you want to think of it like this. Um, music is something that you can't touch. You can only feel it, though. You see what I'm saying? You can't reach out and touch music like the sound waves or whatever. But somehow the sound waves are able to touch you. So that that should let you know that music is based on feeling. It's a based on motion. So when you're listening to the beat, what you're looking for is the different feelings or emotions that that beat makes you feel. Is it happy? Is it sad? Is it angry? Is a do you do you is there a certain memory that sparked when you listen to that beat or that instrumental? You know, those are the things that you want to be thinking of. And it's really going to happen sometimes immediately as soon as you hear the beat. So like with this song that we did for this course, Baby, Baby, Please, when I'm listening to it, I'm going to go ahead and play it real quick. Something kind of just sparked off on me like, yo, I, I think that this is it should go this direction. So, like, for instance, when you listen to this track, you you don't feel like going out and necessarily turning up at the club or something like that. It's not like a party song, right? What you feel is a lot of emotion. You feel, you know, it might it's kind of like a storytelling type of track. It's more, it's more so like something like sparks off a memory, okay? And so those are the things that you're looking for, and you want to be able to easily analyze this when you listen to your music. Now, Keep in mind that you can write lyrics first without the beat, but again, there's a perfect marriage that kind of happens when you write it to the music. Now let's talk about writing the actual sections of the song, okay? Now, we talked about this earlier when it came to actually tracking out the beat, but again, you have your intro, usually about four bars long. It's, it's to create it to just get the, the attention of the listener. You have your hook, okay, which is going to be the most catchy part of the song. It's to kind of be most memorable and it's going to be sung several times throughout the song. Your verses, which are there to tell stories or or, or to kind of like, um, you know, tell the story of the song, really. You have your bridge and then you have your outro. All right. Now, when you're actually writing your verse hooks or whatever, again, you want to go to the music. You want to let the music tell you what to focus on first. So a lot of times if you listen to your beat or whatever, you're either going to get like a melody that's going to pop into your head or a phrase or something's going to spark you. OK. And so whatever that is, go with that. So let's just say you get a melody or whatever, you, whatever the melody is and you that, that inspires you. Start working on the hook first. Again, the hook is the most catchiest part of the song. So you start working on that. If it's the verse. Say you get a phrase, you know, saying you get like some bars or whatever. Start working on that. This don't try to feel like obligated to work on one particular part or the other first. You know, what I mean, it's, it's not it doesn't always have to work that way. You don't always have to work on the hook first or you don't always have to work on your verses first. Do what the beat is telling you to do. Do what you're kind of feeling. Now, this is the rule of thumb on it, though. Once you start on that hook. Go ahead and finish that hook all the way. So if you if you start getting a, the, a melody or a phrase that you feel would be good for that hook, then only then just focus on perfecting that hook first until you go over to your verse, vice versa. All right. Now, that's going to lead us to the next part, which is counting bars or counting measures. OK, because you can't write a song without knowing how to count or count bars or measures. Now, if you were working on like a notepad or writing your, your 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 lyrics down on a pad, then what you would do is each bar is a phrase or a sentence. OK, each measure or each bar is a phrase or, uh, or sentence. So what you want to do is make bullet points. So, for instance, in hip hop, verses are usually 16 bars. And so on your piece of paper, what you would do is you would write out 16 bullet points. And that is going to help you get focused and know how to kind of flow throughout the song now right here in the garage band we have this thing called a notepad all right so technically if you wanted to you can go through here and write the whole song right here in garage band and i think that's a pretty good thing here 
Um, you got different fonts and everything. You can do your different st- uh, size of the fonts, etc. Um, but say if you wanted to get some bullet points, I mean, it doesn't have to be a bullet, so, 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 so to speak, but you can put like this little hyphen. You can do 16 of those. That's four. And I usually leave a space for each section. OK, so you get, you know, and so then like you got your bullets, you got 16 bullets. So say whatever that phrase is that's starting to jump off at you, you just write that down. OK. All right. So now let's talk about actually making your lyrics make sense. OK. Ultimately, your music should rhyme, especially in hip hop. OK, it's not a spoken word piece where you don't necessarily have to rhyme throughout the whole way. You want to make sure that it makes sense and it rhymes. So usually what I do is I try to make sure that the end of every verse kind of matches up rhyming wise with the last verse or at least to every other verse. Okay, so let me tell you, show you what I'm talking about. In this song that we made for the course, um, the first part of the verse, I say, baby, baby, please don't go. We amigos. We go way back like eight tracks in disco. Now you see how there's so there's several different words that rhyme with each other. You want to make sure that, that your verses sound dope like that, like they that they work together. Okay. I say we so fly like seagulls. Who knows? We might be the next ones to grow old. Okay. So you want to make sure it rhymes. I'm not gonna overly. Uh, um, go over that point just make sure your lyrics rhyme okay so i use a metaphor in this verse i say we so fly like seagulls now the word fly means multiple different things it means like you're actually flying in the sky but it's also slang for you looking cool Or everything looks nice or good. So when I say we so fly like seagulls, well, seagull is a a bird and flies usually over a sea. So when I say we so fly, basically what it's saying is like, yo, we're cool. But it's a metaphor because I'm using the word fly, but then also relating it to seagull, which is a bird that flies. Okay, it's the same thing like when I say. We go way back like eight tracks in disco. See, if you remember thinking like going way back, that's not necessarily a metaphor, but it is. You see what I'm saying? Because you think about like, hmm, what what's what like what's in our past? What's in the history past of history and especially like music? A tracks. A track was like a a machine that played music. Now we have like iPods and, and iPhones and different things like that that play music. And so the next generations to go come after us will be talking about how we go back like iPhones. But guess what? We're still in that generation. So that, you see how the and disco was also something that happened a long time ago. So you want to be able to try to tie things together. So when you're making metaphors, you want to reference one point with another point that makes sense but doesn't with the other one, but makes it kind of be catchy to, to the eye or to the listener. All right. So that is that in a nutshell. Only other thing I want to talk about when it comes to songwriting is songwriting tips. One thing you want to do is study your music. Okay. Study music. Make sure you're listening to different genres, listening to different, you know, phrases and different things that people are saying in their lyrics and how they're putting together metaphors and how they're putting together their music. That right there is a is a is a is a major way to learn how to make great songs is just studying music and listening to music a lot. Okay, but listen to it intently. Listen to how they rhyme each bar. Okay. Um, The next thing you want to do is stay on topic. Make sure that as you're writing, you stay on topic. So if you're talking about breaking up with your girlfriend or your boyfriend, ladies or whatever, you know, what I'm saying stay on that topic throughout the song. Don't start talking about now how you're trying to get a job and you're grinding. You're supposed to be talking about breaking up. Okay, so stay on topic as you're you're writing your song. Um, And the next thing is this is a real good tip. 
is sometimes it's better to just go ahead and push record and just hum or kind of like mouth or or, 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 or kind of sing without the words, a melody or even raps. So, for instance, let me let me give you an example. For, for instance, for this song, if I was to just hum anything, what I could do is hum it, rap it or whatever without the words and then go back over what I did and add the words back to it. So I got a basic understanding of how I want it to sound. Not, not, not necessarily what I'm saying, but how I want it to be said. So let's listen. I'm going to give you an example. So I know that sounds foolish. It sounds funny. But honestly, honestly, that is a real good way to write songs. And it actually can take away a lot of the stress of having to come up with something. Because now you have like a, a way to kind of go off of off of your music, off the vibe of the music. And so sometimes in the beginning, what you can do is go ahead and push record. All right. We'll push record and then actually record your lyrics or record your, so your humming part throughout the whole song. And then when you listen back to it, you have the, the basic emotion, the basic emotional element of how you want your music to sound. And you can just fill in the words later. OK, so thank you so much for watching. If you have questions, ask.